If you struggle to draw realistic fur, you clicked on the right video. In this tutorial I'm going to explain what to do and not to do to achieve a realistic looking fur. I have made a colored pencil version as well, so if you'd like to check it out, you can find the video suggestion at the end of this tutorial. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Because I made this mistake a lot in the beginning of my art journey, I had to include it in this do's and don'ts video. Using a putty eraser, dab the paper with a very light pressure to lift the pigment off the paper. Be careful not to erase the sketch entirely, as you'll be left with no guidelines. Although in the demo the circle sketch looks completely erased, this is not the case as it is still visible. This will help you a lot later on in the drawing, when you have to add the details and no part of the sketch should be visible with the details, especially when you are working in color pencils and burnish very hard. Not erasing the sketch will lead to burnishing it together with the colors and result in very thick lines protruding under the colors. On the right side, I didn't touch the circle at all to show you what a difference this fast tip makes. After the sketch has been slightly erased, create a base layer with an HB or 2B pencil using circular movements to spread the pigment evenly over the surface of the paper, then blend everything out with a larger makeup brush or blending stamp. I chose the makeup brush because I won't tend to press too hard and leave smudges. It's not a very expensive one, it costs only $1 and it's very good, the bristles are synthetic and don't leave hairs at all. The pencil and the makeup brush should be held on the opposite side of the tip to limit the pressure put on them. I prefer to start my drawings this way so I have a base to go by and add the other elements. What should under no circumstances be done is creating an inconsistently base layer because this will lead to a scribbly look and result. As you can see in the demo, I didn't take care at all with pressure and direction and everything starts to get very messy which should be avoided when we want to achieve realism. After using the same makeup brush as before to blend, I didn't manage to get rid of all those marks, some still visible. Those stains are because of the paper due to it having a factory defect but it could have happened as well if I pressed really hard in those places. The do number 3 is to mark the light and dark areas, then draw the direction of the fur growth. These two steps will guide and help you a lot in the step of adding details. To mark the shadows, I added a little more pencil after which I blended with a makeup brush, as with the base layer it's all done with a light pressure. When this was finished, I marked the direction of the fur growth with an HB pencil, being careful not to make the marks too thick. When working on a drawing using a reference photo, be sure to constantly look at it and watch how the fur grows there, not do everything from your head. Avoid in any case to make the fur of the whole drawing only in one direction. This mistake is made by many beginners because they don't pay much attention to the reference picture or want to draw from their imagination but have no idea about the anatomy of the animal. The fur grows in many directions and it's not easy to draw but with practice you will understand how to do it correctly. Of course, if you want to achieve a cartoony drawing, what I do now in the video is acceptable, but if you want the drawing to turn out realistically, it is not recommended. For a guaranteed success, when you get to the core of the drawing, which is the drawing of the detailed fur, always start with the lightest layer and work your way up until the fur reaches the darkness you want. This will make it possible for all those previous layers to show underneath the new ones, creating an effect of depth in the fur. A very sharp pencil is more than necessary 
to achieve a fine, thin fur. A sharp tip also gives a different feel when drawing as opposed to drawing with a very blunt pencil. Another thing to keep in mind is to keep the pencil as close as possible to the tip and keep rotating it to always use the sharp side of the pencil. Now you can see how much it helps that earlier I marked the light and dark areas and the direction of the fur because I don't have to stress anymore about everything being in the right place as I'm sure everything is going in the right direction. To convince and show you that you should never skip the previous step, I started drawing the fur using only a very high pressure and the dull pencil, which is a big mistake. Many beginners try to finish a drawing as quickly as possible because they have no patience, skipping all those painstaking and time-consuming steps. In my demo, you can see how slowly the drawing becomes flat and lifeless. This is due to the fact that those thick lines cover the previous layers, turning everything into a very dark area. I used to make these mistakes 3 years ago when I started out drawing animals. I really thought that the fur was done only in one turn and that it grows only in one direction, which was solved with learning and practicing. Let's end this tutorial with, in my opinion, one of the most essential steps to make the fur look as realistic as possible, which is adding highlights. Because at the beginning we created that base layer and covered the entire surface of the paper, that pure white of the paper is no longer visible and needs to be brought out. My favorite tool for creating highlights is the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, because it has a very hard but soft texture at the same time, ideal for this purpose. Before you start erasing, you need to think carefully about the areas where the eraser will be applied so that you don't remove too much but not too little as well. You just need to find a balance that will benefit the end result, not drag it down. In the end, I added some more contrast and drew around the highlights to make them pop even more. Initially, I didn't want to add highlights at all in the don't circle, but I wanted to show you that by not following all the previous beneficial steps, adding highlights won't do wonders. Even if you follow the first steps, but eventually use a dull pencil and draw the fur only in one direction with too much pressure, all the good work will be in vain as it will all be covered by those thick lines. I know that fur can be intimidating, but the key is to start slowly from light to dark to give yourself the chance to correct mistakes in time and not have to start all over again. Now we came to an end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from it. I am posting one time a week and normally graphite, color pencil or pastel related videos, so if you don't want to miss any of those, Please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Have a nice day. Bye guys.